What is going on guys, Lawrence here, aka Monk7Mad, and today we're going to start a brand new series in Cinema 4D, and this is basically to learn Cinema 4D modelling. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off in today's video with some of the basics, which is just to look at what a basic shape is, its form, how to edit, and then we're going to have a look at the tools such as the points, the edge, and the polygon mode where well, we can start to get really sophisticated and in the next video we're going to follow on directly off of this one so don't go anywhere just you may learn something quite interesting and in fact you you won't might you will learn something quite interesting so stick around so first of all cinema 4d when you create any shape you get what's known as a primitive shape and this is basically a type of shape where the developers have said you can control them through sliders and other property boxes so, one thing about this right now is I always compare this exact mode to something like in Photoshop. So when you've got a text layer, for example, you can type in the text, you can change the color and the font, but you can't add any filters or things to it, so brightness or contrast, etc. Because its font type doesn't match. So what you have to do in Photoshop is rasterize it, which is when you actually say to the, the program, actually, I want more control over this. So it disables certain features, such as the sliders, in this case, in order to allow me to modify how I'd like. And that's exactly what's happening here. So at the moment, we can modify the size through the sliders and the few tools up here, but that's about the extent of it. I mean, we can add some segments which are split in the shape, but there's not really much we can do about it. We, we can't really make this into a triangle, or we can't grab these corners and move them out. So this is where the primitive shape is quite limited and we need to create something then called a parametric object and at the moment I'm highlighting the tool which we'll need to convert our primitive type to a parametric and parametric basically means that you give the program flexibility to modify the points and have more control now the way that Cinema 4D is built up is through a mathematical set of points so I've just converted this to our polygon parametric shape. And you do that by pressing this button here, which was highlighted a minute ago. Or you can press the letter C. And now we can actually edit the points. So you can see right now the points are highlighting when I hover over them. Now if I just undo this for a minute and I go back to the primitive shape, so you can see we're in the primitive shape because we have the cube icon there and we have the sliders back now we're still on the point mode but we can't grab these points so once it is converted we can do now the great thing about this is we can actually modify any of these as we like so you can select as many as you like as well using the shift key to select more than one or multiple so if I wanted to grab just this bottom one I can just drag it out and I can modify the shape as I like Admittedly, it's a bit hab-dash to do it like that, but the point is you can do these things. Now, a minute ago, I was saying about this program being mathematical. Well, if you go on the right-hand side, you've got objects, content browser, and something called structure, or a tab called structure. Now, this tab will actually show you individual points. Now, these individual points, you can see the mathematical coordinates for them. So, negative 100 on the X. So now that we've actually had a look at the mathematical points and we can select them, what else can we do? Well, in the points mode, there are many things you can do. At the moment, it may seem a bit strange, so I won't explain that until a later point. But basically, the gist is, with the points, if you accidentally delete a face, so at the moment we've got this cube, but if this panel here was to disappear, we delete it by accident, or you're creating your own shape and there isn't a panel there, you can use the points and connect the points together to form a face. So right now we could get a tool, well, I won't use it right now, but create polygon and you could select each of these individual four points and what the program will do is we'll use them as a reference and create the shape that we've, we've basically defined with the points. The second one is the edge tool. Now the edge tool is likewise very handy. So again we have the option of selecting any edge on the shape, we can select the bottom, the top, you name it, and we can move them out just as we did with the points. We can rotate them, we can do whatever. We can extrude them and bevel them. Now, 
the extrusion and bevel is going to be in the next tutorial. So stick around because it's going to follow directly onwards. So the idea is with this uh, edge tool is that you can just again select, adjust the shape, its height, its position, its rotations. So you can basically do anything you can do with a point that you can with the lines, except the lines, there isn't actually as much control in terms of actually generating other shapes and things to connect to it. This is more solidly for if you had, let's say, you wanted to create this from this one cube, you wanted to create a table top to go on top of this. Let's say this is the base. We can select all the edges. And if we were to use the extrude tool, I'm going to use it for a demonstration right now, but you don't need to know exactly what I'm doing. But if I was to extrude it, it creates like a an extra edge for each of these. So right now, you can see there's no top on the shape. And that's because we've extruded the edges out. And it's only the edges. We, we've not defined an entire shape. We're only selecting this particular edge. So you can see it's actually thin. Like so. And you can extrude out in, in different directions. So if I wanted to, I could extrude this and, and pull it out this way. And create our shape that in that in that mannerism. So you can see it's just one flat line of one side. <clears throat> and you can also see it also gets added here. If you want to put this back to general, you just click on the objects tab again. Now I'm going to just undo those for a minute. So we're back to our cube again. And the last one is the polygon. Now this one a lot of you will probably have used more or will use the most. And this is where you can select individual sides. So when you want to use other tools later on, like the knife to cut across, make your own shapes, this is the tool you'll probably be using. You can also do all sorts of things again with extrusion. So let's say we wanted to create a speaker. We could then select this one side. We could use our polygon once we've selected that to then either extrude sections or we can manipulate them. And we can create even more things just solely based on having this ability to select single panels. And we can adjust all these and we can make them all different. You can see now we've, we've created some very abstract kind of shape. And that's sort of the, the capabilities of these modes. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to cover how to actually use the extrude. Some of the other tools we'll be using are the bevel, the extrude inner, and we may, if we have time, cover either the... No, actually, we'll, we'll just leave it at that, because otherwise we'll get a bit too complex. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoy. hope you've learned something new. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Stick around, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.